Hello, welcome back if you're returning or welcome if you're new. Today I have some of my favorite, Edgar Allan Poe. I'm going to read Tamerlane, a short poem from him. So please give me a like, sub if you're not subbed. A lot of people keep keep returning but are not subscribed and it really helps my channel out so please sub and uh, I also have a little announcement on the Lord of the Rings series which I was very happy to be doing but as it turns out copyright is 70 years plus the age of the author when they passed away so or 95 years so I had to put that on hold. Um, I have left a couple of excerpts up, which is okay for fair use, and I can do that. Uh, but I have submitted a request to the publisher to actually be able to use that. And so we will see if I get permission. It's unlikely, but I did have to try. So let's get started. Tamerlane. Kind solace in a dying hour. Such father is not now my theme. I will not madly deem that power. Of earth may shrive me of the sin unearthly pride hath reveled in. I have no time to dote or dream. You call it hope, that fire of fire. But is it is but agony of desire. If I can hope, O oh God, I can. Its fount is holier, more divine. I would not call thee fool, old man, but such is not a gift of thine. Know thou secret of a spirit, bowed from its wild pride into shame. O oh, yearning heart, I did inherit thy withering portion with the fame, the searing glory which hath shone amid the jewels of my throne, halo of hell and with a pain, not hell shall make me fear again. O craving heart for the lost flowers and sunshine of my summer hours, the dying voice of that dead time with its interminable chime, rings in the spirit of a spell upon thy emptiness, a knell. I have not always been as now, a fevered diadem on my brow. I claimed and won unsurprisingly, hath not the same fierce heirdom give, Rome to the Caesar, this to me. The heritage of a kingly mind and a proud spirit which hath striven triumphantly with humankind. On mountain soil I first drew life, and the mists of the Tangley have shed nightly their dews upon my head. And I believe the winged strife and tumult of the headlong air have nestled in my very hair. So late from heaven that dew it fell, mid dreams of an unholy night, upon me with the touch of hell. While the red flashing of the light from clouds that hung like banner o'er, appeared to my half-closing eye the pageantry of monarchy and the deep trumpet's thunder's roar, came hurriedly upon me telling of human battle, where my voice, my own voice, silly child, was swelling Oh, how my spirit could rejoice and leap within me at the cry, the battle cry of victory. The rain came down upon my head unsheltered, and the heavy wind rendered me mad and deaf and blind. It was but man, I thought, who shed laurels upon me in the rush, the torrent of the chilly air gurgled within my ear the crush of empires and the captive's prayer, the hum of suitors, and the tone of flattery round a sovereign's throne. My passions from the hapless hour 
usurped a tyranny which men have deemed since I have reached to power, my innate nature be it so. But father, there lived one who then, then, in my boyhood, when their fire burned with a still intenser glow, for passion must with youth expire. E'en when, who knew this iron heart in woman's weakness had a part. I have no words, alas, to tell the loveliness of live loving well, nor would I now attempt to trace the more than beauty of the a face whose lineaments upon my mind are shadows, the unstable wind. Thus I remember having dwelt some page of early lore upon with loitering eye till I have felt the letters with their meaning melt to fantasies with none. Oh, she was worthy of all love. Love as in infancy was mine. Twas such an angel minds above might envy her young heart the shine on which my ever hope and thought were incense than a goodly gift, for they were childish and upright, pure as her young example taught. Why did I leave it and adrift, trust to the fire within for light? We grew in age and love together, roaming the forest in the wild, her breast my shield in wintry weather, and when the friendly sunshine smiled, and she would mark the opening skies. I saw no heaven but in her eyes. Young love's first lesson is the heart. For mid that sunshine and those smiles, when from our little cares apart, and laughing at her girlish wiles, I'd throw me on her throbbing breast and pour my spirit out in tears. There was no need to speak the rest, no need to quiet any fears of her who asked no reason why, but turned on me her quiet eye. Yet more than worthy of the love, my spirit struggled with and strove. When on the mountain peak alone, ambition lent it a new tone. I had no being but in thee, the world and all it did contain, in the earth, the air, the sea, its joy, its little lot of pain. That was new pleasure, the ideal, dim vanities of dreams by night, and dimmer nothings which were real, shadows and a more shadowy light, parted upon their misty wings, and so confusedly became thine image and a name, a name. Two separate yet most intimate things. I was ambitious. Have you known the passion, father? Have you not? A cottager, I marked a throne of half the world as all my own and murmured at such lowly lot but just like any other dream upon the vapor of the dew, my own had passed, did not the beam of beauty, which did while it threw. The minute, the hour, the day oppress my mind with double loveliness. We walked together on the crown of a high mountain which looked down afar from its proud natural towers of rock and forest on the hills the dwindled hills, begirt with bowers, and shouting with a thousand rills. I spoke of her, of power and pride, but mystically in such guise that she might deem it not beside the moment's converse in her eyes. I read, perhaps too carelessly, a mingled feeling with my own, the flush of her bright cheek to me, seemed to become a queenly throne, too well that I should let it be light in the wilderness alone. I wrapped myself in grandeur then, 
and donned a visionary crown. Yet it was not that fantasy that thrown her mantle over me, but that among the rabble, men, lion ambition is chained down and crouches to a keeper's hand, not so in deserts where the grand, the wild, the terrible conspire with their own breath to fan his fire. Look round thee now, and Sarman can. Is not she queen of earth, her pride above all cities in her hand? Their destinies in all beside of glory which the world hath known, stands she not nobly and alone? Of glory which the world hath known, Falling her veriest stepping stone shall form the pedestal of a throne. And who her sovereign, Timur, he whom the astonished people saw, striding o'er empires haughtily, a diadem outlaw. O human love, thou spirit given, on earth of all we hope in heaven, which fallest into the soul like rain upon the Sirach withered plain, and falling, failing in thy power to bless, but leavest the ha heart in wilderness. Idea which bindest life around with music of so strange a sound, and beauty of so wild a birth. Farewell, for I have won the earth. When hope the eagle that towered could see no cliff beyond him in the sky his pinions were bent droopingly and homeward turned his softened eye was twas sunset when the sun will part there comes a soliness of heart to him who still would look upon the glory of the su summer sun that soul will hate an evening mist so often lovely and will list to the sound of the coming darkness, known to those whose spirits hearken, as one who in a dream of night would fly, but cannot from a danger high. What thou the moon, the white moon, shed all the splendor of her noon? Her smile is chilly, and her beam, in that time of dreariness, will seem so like you gather in your breath a portrait taken after death. A boyhood is a summer sun, whose waning is the dreariest one. For all we live to know is known, and all we seek to keep hath flown. Let life then, as the day flower, fall with the noonday beauty which is all. I reached my home, my home no more, for all had flown who made it so. I passed from out its mossy door, and though my tread was soft and low, a voice came from the thres threshold stone of one whom I had earlier known. Oh, I defy thee, hell to show, on beds of fire that burn below, a humble heart, a deeper woe. Father, I firmly do believe, I know, for death, who comes for me? From regions of the blessed afar, where there is nothing to deceive, hath left his iron gate ajar, and rays of truth you cannot see are flashing through eternity. I do believe that Eblis hath a snare in every human path, Else how, when in the holy grove, I wandered of the idle love, who daily scents his snowy wings with incense of burnt offerings from the most unpolluted things, whose pleasant bowers are yet so riven above the threlect rays from heaven. No moat may shun, no tiniest fly, the lightning of his eagle eye. How was it that ambition crept, unseen amid the revels there, till growing bold he laughed and leapt 
in the tangles of love's very hair. That is the end. Please like, 